In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure a DHCP server and different pool for different VLANs in Cisco Packet Tracer Lab. Before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing to the channel and also turn on the notification to get my future video updates. Also, don't forget to like the video if it is helpful for you. Without further ado, let's get into the configuration. As I told you, I'm going to show you how to configure a DHCP server and configure different pools for different VLANs and subnets. So these PCs on different VLANs and subnet can get IP address from your DHCP server. So you do not have to configure them manually. That is the basic idea of a DHCP server. So I already have started the configuration. So let's get into the DHCP server and see what already have been configured and what needs to be configured for these subnets to work, for these PCs to get the IP address from the DHCP server. This is the DHCP server configuration. Go to services and go to DHCP. There are some pools already have been configured. You can see sales, Pools have been configured, accounting pools have been configured, but I have not configured marketing and admin pools. So marketing is a different VLAN, admin is a different VLAN, both of them are different subnets. If you look at the configuration of a switch, show VLAN, marketing is VLAN 30, admin is VLAN 40, and the SVI resides in this router. If you look at the router, show run, this is the SVI for VLAN 30. So this will be the gateway address for VLAN 30. This will be the gateway address for VLAN 40. So let's understand how DHCP is going to work. First of all, you need to be able to ping your DHCP server. I have a static IP assigned to this PC that is 10, 10, 11, 12. Let's see whether I can reach the DHCP server. Ping 192, 168. 100, 254. So I have a problem reaching DHCP server. Let's troubleshoot that first. So this is the marketing PC. If you look at the marketing PC, the IP address supposed to be 192.168.310. But here it has been configured wrong. So let's fix that. 192.168.3.10 change the default gateway to 31. Let's try to ping again. Now I can reach the DHCP server. So let me show you the DHCP server IP, config, desktop, IP config. This has been configured statically. When it comes to DHCP server, you always must assign a static IP to your DHCP server because if the DHCP server IP address changed, all the client that rely on the DHCP helper address will not be able to get IP address. I will explain to you what is the helper address when I do the configuration in few seconds. So now I'm going to go and change this IP to DHCP and see whether it can get a DHCP address. So it is requesting IP address. It is getting no address. That's why it is getting 169.254.78208. This is a self-assigned IP address. You see, DHCP failed. You cannot go anywhere using this IP address. I'm going to close and I'm going to show you how the configuration works. So you go to your router. In this case, this is a multi-layer switch. It's a layer two plus layer three. So it is acting as a switch and a router. So the SVI that is called a switched virtual interface live in this router. First, I'm going to look at the running configuration of VLAN 30. Show run int VLAN 30. I know this command is not going to work in the Cisco Packet Tracer, but in a real switch, this command will work. To look at the running configuration of VLAN 30, you have to do show run. This is the running config of VLAN 30. You can see it has a MAC address and an IP address. So this is the gateway for VLAN 30. But if you look at VLAN 10 and 20, you see something has configured IP helper address. 
you need IP helper address for DSCP to work. The reason is DSCP request is a broadcast traffic because this PC is asking who is the DSCP server here? Give me an IP address. So it is going to send its broadcast to all the devices within the VLAN and it will reach the gateway and the gateway will drop the traffic. Since the router know DSCP request is a special broadcast traffic and without the DSCP, nothing is going to work. So what it does is it uses its helper address to pass that broadcast to the DSCP server. So it is basically converting the broadcast traffic into a unicast traffic through the DSCP server and the DSCP server will offer an IP address to the request and that will be passed down to the client because it knows where the traffic came from. So it will be a unicast traffic back to the client. That is how the client is going to get the IP address. So let's configure the helper address to VLAN 30. Conf t int VLAN 30 IP helper address. I'm going to copy the helper address and paste it here. This helper address, remember, it is the DSCP server IP address. One more thing you have to do for this to work. You need to go to the DSCP server and configure a port. So go to services, DSCP. You need to modify this pool for marketing. This is a default pool that you need to use as a template and cannot be removed to configure a new pool. If you look at sales pool, you can remove, you can remove accounting pool, but you cannot remove server pool. So I'm going to use this pool to configure marketing. 192, 168, 3.1 is the gateway. I'm going to use Google as a DNS, 8888. And the poll starts with 3, say 75. Mask is same. I'm going to say maximum number of client as 50. Add. So now I have the marketing pool defined. Let's close this one and go to the marketing PC and request a DSCP address. So I'm going to switch back to static go back to DSCP to reinitiate. So now you can see it is getting the right IP and it is getting the first IP which is available in the pool. It is getting the mask, it is getting the gateway, it is getting the DNS server all from the DSCP pool from the DSCP server. So let's try another PC in a different switch to get an IP address. Go here, desktop, I'm going to go to DSCP and see what IP it is getting. It is requesting IP. Now it's getting a second IP which is available in the pool that is 76. 